How's it going, everybody? Welcome to today's Tech Mobility class. I am Coach Ray, and as usual, thank you for joining me for today's class. Now, for today's class, it is going to be quite a bit different. You'll notice I have a squat rack and a band set up behind me. I also have a bench. I also have a pad for us and on and a kettlebell. The way I'm going to set up the class today is we're going to do some banded distractions. And to basically sum it up super duper short, a banded distraction creates a little bit of space in a joint capsule. And we're going to do this mainly and only actually on the hips. And what we're going to do is we're going to work with certain positions, adding in that tension from the band and work on activating certain tissues to further get into a, a better stretch. And then we're going to immediately go in and start to activate those tissues that are in charge of stabilizing that particular joint. So someone happens to have maybe a little bit of hip discomfort, maybe even a slight bit of hip pain. This might actually be a pretty useful class for you. However, we are gonna do a full body class. This is not gonna be something where we're working actually super duper hard, but it is gonna be taxing in the sense of how much focus and concentration is gonna be needed for every particular drill. Now, to first start off, we're gonna start off with the hips. And I'm gonna take the pad and we're gonna use both sticks. Now, the amount of tension on the band, it should be a relatively significant amount of tension, meaning it shouldn't be a super thin band. It also shouldn't be a super thick band, it's hard for you to get into, but there should be tension pulling in a certain direction. And so I have a green band here. This band is gonna be relatively thick. Now, I want to talk about where you put the band. So you're gonna set the band up as high up in your hip joint as possible here. And so when I step in, I'm going to get the band up really, really high, basically right under my glute here. And so since the band's on my left hip, that is the hip I'm going to be actively stretching. So I'm going to get my left knee down and you can adjust your distance as you need to in order to get into this position here. Now already you're gonna feel that tension pulling the hip forward, right? Now what we're gonna do from this position, this is gonna be actually focusing on the anterior tissues of the hip. I'm going to flatten out my, the top of my foot into the floor, and I'm gonna have the six angled out in front. And at the bottom of the six are in line with the heel here, I'm gonna drive the stick down roughly about 20%, drive my back foot into the floor, and I'm going to do a posterior pelvic tilt. As you do that, you're gonna feel a really, really big stretch on the front of that hip, and then I'm going to squeeze my glute. And it's gonna feel like quite a bit of a stretch, but again, we're getting that motion or that tension from the joint capsule shifting anteriorly here. I'm going to ease off. I'm gonna shift my hips back, drive the sticks down, tuck my pelvis, squeeze my glute, and shift my hips forward again. Make sure you're breathing. Hold. Excellent, ease off. Let's go one more time. Drive the stick down, drive the back foot into the floor, tuck the pelvis, and squeeze that glute. Excellent, ease off, going to stand up, come out, and now I'm gonna switch legs. And so the reason why, again, we're adding tension to this stretch by getting the band to pull us forward is mainly so we can actually get, get a real good sense of what it feels like for that anterior shift and the push-ups and the hips to actually go forward. You should feel like it's a much, much better stretch on the hip flexors and the front of the hip here. So I'm gonna get set up in that same position. Now the band's on my right leg, back knee is down. I'm going to drive the six down 20%, drive the back foot into the floor, tuck my pelvis and squeeze my glute. Should feel a nice, good stretch in front of that hip here. Ease off, so shift those hips back. We're gonna do that same thing again, drive down, Grab the foot into the floor, tuck your pelvis and squeeze your glute. Excellent, 
Excellent, knees off. Let's go one more time. Drive the sticks down, tuck the pelvis, drive that foot into the floor, squeeze the glute. Make sure you're breathing here. Excellent, we're gonna ease off. We're gonna come up and we're gonna get out of the band here. Now, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do pelvic tilt. So I'm gonna take a wider than shoulder with stance. Toes are gonna to be pointed forward. I want the bottom of the sticks to be in line with my big toes on both sides. I'm gonna have my hands at roughly about shoulder to chest height. And I'm gonna get into a nice good horse stance here. Again, we're still making sure that our torso is up nice and high. So I'm going to turn to the side here. So pelvis is stacked under the spine. From here, I'm gonna drive those six down 20% and I'm gonna do a posterior tilt. So I'm going to tuck my pelvis posteriorly, squeeze my glutes, drive my knees apart. You should be feeling quite a bit of glute activation here. Now I'm going to go anterior tilt. So tilt the opposite direction. If your hips are a bucket, you're trying to tip water out the front. Posterior tilt. Good, breathe. Anterior tilt. Posterior tilt. Squeeze those glutes, drive those knees apart. Drive the sticks into the floor. Let's go one more each way. Anterior tilt. Posterior tilt. Squeeze those glutes. Drive, drive, drive. Three, two, one. Excellent, ease off. Wonderful. Glutes should be feeling pretty good. Hips should be feeling pretty good there. Now what we're gonna do we're actually going to place the sticks down for this one. And what we're going to focus on, you can have a bench set up so that you're able to further balance for this particular drill. Right after we do this drill, we're actually going to get right into some hip abduction, really focus on activating those glutes, and that's where the kettlebell is going to come in. Now, I'm going to move this over quite a, quite a bit. Since my right leg is going to be closest to the band, that is the side I'm going to be stretching here. We're actually getting that uh, joint mobilization on. And so I'm going to take the band and the rules are still the same. We want to make sure that band is as high up in the hip as possible. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to step out and you'll see I already got a lot of tension going out to the side here. Now what I want to do from this position is I'm going to work on internal rotation of the hip. So if you, again, if you have a bench or something to kind of set your weight on, you can. I'm gonna take my right hip, my right knee, and I'm gonna drive it towards my center line here. And I wanna take a deep breath and try to relax my right hip as much as I can. Breathe. And now I'm gonna take off my right hand and drive my right knee out squeezing my right glute as hard as I can. Excellent. We're gonna relax this right hip. I'm gonna bring that knee back towards my center line, so internally rotating, and I'm going to hinge forward, and I'm gonna place my left hand on the ground, and I'm gonna go, again, go in a deep breath. So deep breath in, exhale. Deep breath in, exhale. I'm gonna stay in position and I'm going to drive my right knee out, squeezing that right glute. Squeeze it hard, three, two, one. Excellent, I'm going to ease off. I'm gonna slowly come out. Now I'm going to switch sides. So now I'm gonna step in with my left side and I'm actually going to kind of change my angle here. And again, get it up as high as you can in that hip. Get that right knee down, okay? Now from here, it's that same thing. With that left hand, 
I'm going to push my left knee towards my center line. Breathe. So if you're missing internal hip rotation, this is actually a really good drill to help for that. Actively drive that left knee out. Squeeze that left glute, try to get it to fire as hard as you can. Excellent. So relax that left hip, take that left hand, drive it toward the center line, get into a little bit more of a hinge position. So try to close the angle between your hip or your femur and your torso. Breathe. Excellent. Actively drive that left knee out. Excellent. Knees off. Going to slowly come out. Get the band off. Excellent. Now we're going to pick up the sticks. And your hips are going to feel a little, little wonky, a little slightly wonky there. So it's kind of getting them moving around for a minute or so. If you need to, kind of shake your legs out, right? So we just created a little bit of space in that joint. Now we're going to activate those lateral hip tissues to get it to really lock in that activation and that stability. So I'm going to go with a feet together stance. Bottom of the sticks are going to be angled in towards me and lined up with my midfoot. I'm going to have my hands at roughly about shoulder height. I'm gonna drive both sticks down. I'm gonna hover my left hip or left foot and bring it over to the left stick and drive that left foot into the stick about 40%. Should be feeling that left glute and left lateral hip fire. Back in and ease off. Take a second, we're gonna do that again. Drive both sticks down. Hover the left hip, bring it to the left stick, push, 40%. Make sure those toes are pointed forward. Three, two, one, excellent. Back in, ease off. Let's go one more time. Drive six down, left foot up, push against the stick. Breathe, three, two, one, excellent, back in, and foot down. Now we're gonna switch over to the other side. Drop both sticks down, hover the right foot, bring it to the right stick and push. Breathe, three, two, one, back in, ease off. Let's go two more, doing good folks. Drop down, hover the right foot, bring it to the right stick and push. Three, two, one, back in, he's off. One more time, folks, one more time. Drop down, over the right foot, bring it to the right stick and push. Breathe, three, two, one, excellent, and he's off. Now, if you have something to stand on, be the perfect time to grab it like a small stool. However, I'm just gonna do this from the ground here. And what we're gonna do is it's gonna be basically a single leg squat. And we're gonna add a little bit more load specifically to the hips. And so I'm gonna have the stick angled out in front. These are just for balance here. I'm gonna start off with my left leg. So I wanna make sure that I'm driving my toes into the floor. So create a good, strong foot position here. And I'm gonna hover my right foot off the floor and I'm gonna actually kind of kick my right hip into extension a bit here. Now the objective, again, the sticks are just for balance, is I'm going to hinge and I'm going to squat down a bit. And what I'm looking for here is to make sure that my left knee is over midfoot or maybe even slightly out. And I'm, you should feel the glute fire and kick on and then we're gonna drive the foot into the floor, stand up to a tall 
hip extended position. You're gonna hinge, squat down, hold, three, two, one, back up, that's two. So hinge, squat down, up, three, let's go two more, hinge, squat down, up, four, one more time, hinge, squat down, up, five, excellent, knees off. Your left glute should be firing a lot by now. And so this is actually a really, really good warm up if you're actually going to go into doing squats, which is what we're gonna use a kettlebell for next, is to warm up that squat position a little bit more. So we're gonna do the same thing, drive the toes into the floor here, nice active foot, kick that hip out into extension. We're gonna hinge and then squat down. Good, up, squeeze the glute, hinge, squat down, up, good, hinge, squat down, up, three, let's go two more, hinge, squat, up, Four, one more time, hinge and squat. Up, five, excellent. Ease off. We're gonna take two sticks, place them down, and we're gonna take a kettlebell. This kettlebell should be nice and light. It shouldn't be too heavy. Now we're gonna get into a deep goblet squat. When we get down into that position, we're gonna focus on paying attention to where our hips are and how they're moving. And so what we're looking for here is to make sure that for one, we keep our feet nice and active. For two, that we're actually getting, the glutes should be feeling pretty active here. And I'll actually start from a side position here. And also keeping the core engaged. So the core should be nice and tight to create a nice good stable position in the midsection and as we actually go into that squat we should feel good stability from the hips and the core so i'm going to pick up the kettlebell and i'm going to place it out in front if you'd like to get a little a little bit more leverage to sit in the bottom you can have the kettlebell out in front so from here feet are nice and active tighten my core breathe in and i'm going to squat down go as low as i can and I'm really gonna sink down nice and deep into that squat here. And I wanna maintain full uh, contact with my foot. Stand up. Good. Let's go two more. Core engaged. Hinge. Up. Two, we're gonna go one more, and I'm actually gonna turn four for this last one here. Core tight. We're gonna to start to squat. Nice, good position here at the bottom. Full contact with the foot. And stand up. Three, excellent. I'm gonna place this down and move this to the side. So this is where you can kind of move your hips around, kind of get a feel for how your hips are feeling, but your hips should be feeling pretty good, pretty warm. Again, this is a, this first part, or this part of the routine is a really good way to open up the hips for squats, really get things nice and ready, kind of get those hips ready to handle that deeper range of motion, depending on however deep you squat, just so you're also much more connected and you're getting up, gonna get less issues in terms of your movement capacity and movements. So that's the lower body aspect. Now we're gonna move on to the spine. And so with the spine, we're gonna first start off with flexion and extension. So 
we're effectively going to do a standing cat camel or well cat camel cat dog cat cow there's so many different names that i heard it in but what i'm going to do here feet are going to be roughly about shoulder width toes are four hands are going to be roughly about shoulder height here but what i'm going to do the sticks are roughly in line with my midfoot here i'm going to drive my hands out and i'm going to hinge back Get a nice good stretch in that T-spine. You might actually notice that your lower back feels pretty good too here, right? Got the hips nice and active. Now from here, I'm going to flex my spine. So I'm going to try to round my spine, still in a hinge position. Then I'm going to extend back out. Good. Gonna flex, so going to spinal flexion. Excellent, extend. Good, going to spinal flexion again. And extend. Breathe, excellent, we're gonna stand back up. Nice and easy. And now I'm going to place one stick down and we're going to get into lateral flexion here. The spine moves 360 degrees. It's not just flexion extension, it's also rotation, it's also lateral flexion. So we'll get all those movements. So I'm going to take the stick, place it behind my upper back like so. And what I want to do here, having my hands over the top of the sticks, you're going to feel a little bit of tension in the stick here and you should. I'm gonna have my feet roughly about hip to shoulder width apart, and I'm gonna squeeze my glutes lightly. Not too, not too hard, just light. And I'm going to laterally flex to my left. So I'm gonna pull, and we're gonna drive this left hand down. Going towards my left knee. Breathe, and we're gonna come back up to neutral. Then I'm gonna laterally flex to the other side. So I'm gonna pull that right hand down towards my knee. Back to center, switch sides again, pull that left hand in. Excellent, back to center, other side. Excellent. Come back up and ease off. Now we're going to get into working with rotation. So we're going to take the pad that we were kneeling on earlier and we're going to kneel it again. And we're going to be in a half kneeling position. And for this, again, we're still creating tension, but what we're looking for here is getting that upper back tension as we go into that rotation. And so I'm going to go to a half kneeling position. I'm going to move this over a bit more. And I'm going to have the stick behind my mid back. Right leg is forward, left leg is back here. Now from this position here, I want to shift forward. So we're going to create a little bit of space or more so splitting the hips here by shifting forward on that front leg. Now my back foot is dorsiflex. So my big toe is driving into the floor. From this position here, I'm going to hinge just a little bit all right so i'm going to load that front hip a bit and i'm going to rotate this left end down in front place it on the floor and i'm going to pull the stick apart about 30 percent you should be feeling upper back activation excellent ease off come back to center and back up we're gonna do that again. Shift forward, get a little bit of a hinge, place the left end of the stick down, pull the stick apart, 30%. Gonna feel a lot of rotation. We got the upper back getting really, really active here. Excellent, ease off, back to center, come up. Let's go one more time. 
Shift four. Rotate the left end down. If you can, get a little further across here. Pull the stick apart. Now we're getting further rotation. Ease off, back to center, and come up. Wonderful. Now we're going to switch sides. So I'm actually going to change angles here. So now we're going to have that right knee down, left leg forward. Again, dorsiflexing on that back ankle, so we're driving that big toe down. I'm going to split those hips here. Sink forward. We're going to rotate this right end of the stick down. Place it on the floor. Pull apart 30%. Excellent, ease off, back to neutral, and up. Let's get two more here, try to get a little further across. Shift forward, rotate the right end down, pull apart, 30% folks. So it shouldn't feel like you're relaxing, you should actually get some activation here. Ease off, back to center, up. Let's go one more time. Shift forward, do a little bit of a hinge, try to get further across, and pull apart. Three, two, one, ease off, back to center, and stand up. Excellent. Good. Now we're going to move the stick over to the side. We're gonna get one more rotational drill. And so for this one here, we'll wanna go with a wide stance, very much like if we're gonna get into the slap shot or the ninja flow. And so the stance is gonna be as wide as whatever's comfortable for you. You don't have to go super duper wide. We're just going really wide here so we can actually keep the low back from moving as much as we possibly can. And so I'm gonna have my feet angled forward mostly you can have a little bit of a slight toe out angle if that's more comfortable for you, but it depends on you and whatever is best. So we're gonna have the stick lined up with our center line here. And I'm gonna have both hands on the stick. So I'm gonna have my right hand stacked over my left hand here. And what I'm gonna do from this position here, having soft knees, I'm going to drive both hands out, hips back. And I'm gonna move the stick to my right side. So I'm getting rotation going to my right, or to my, yeah, to my right. And I'm gonna take my right hand, which was on the top of the stick, and I'm going to place it on the back and I'm going to drive that hand away, which is gonna get more rotation. Breathe. I'm gonna wrap my hand back around. I'm gonna come forward and stand up. Good, we're gonna switch sides. So I'm gonna switch hands. Left hand is up, roughly about chest height. I'm going to keep my knees soft, hinge, rotate the stick over to the left. Make sure your head clears, looking at the floor. Left hand's on the back of the stick and drive out. Back forward, stand up. Excellent, switch sides, let's go one last time. So switch your hands, drive out. Rotate the stick to the right. Place your right hand on the back, drive that hand out. Excellent, come back forward, stand up. Wonderful, switch those hands. Drive out. Rotate the stick over to the left. Place your hand on the back, drive out.
back forward, up, excellent. Wiggle those feet in, wonderful, good. So spine is now warmed up, adequate. We go through flexion extension, lateral flexion rotation, and adding tension to that rotation can make a significant difference when it comes to how your spine is actually working for that day. Another thing you can actually add into that is a wall push if you wanted to work on activating those obliques. Now, we're gonna move on to the shoulders. So I'm gonna take both sticks here. We're gonna first go through and stretch out the chest. Most people are really, really tight in the, uh, in the chest. So what we're gonna do is gonna go with a version of skinning the cat, then we're gonna get into the snake and reach. And after that, we're gonna get into adding in some tension to that, working on shoulder extension and shoulder flexion uh, based drills. I'm gonna take a about roughly hip width stance and I'm gonna have my toes pointed forward. I want the sticks to be right on the outside of my feet here in line with my toes. Now, both hands are gonna be on a stick, thumbs up towards the ceiling here. And I'm gonna have my hands out to the side to start off with here. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually move my hands forward just a bit. So if I actually turn to the side, if I start from here, if I'm starting here, I wanna move my hands forward like so. So I'm actually at a little bit of a Y angle. And what I'm gonna do from this position here is I'm going to hinge back. So I'm going to drive my hips back, keeping my arms straight, and I wanna go down until I get a nice, good stretch in the pecs and the shoulders, and you might even get a little bit of the biceps here. Breathe. Gonna come back up. Excellent. Now we're gonna move the sticks out to the side. We're gonna do that same thing, arms are straight. Going to hinge back and drive my torso down towards the floor. And I wanna get a hang in my hands here. You should be feeling a nice big stretch in the chest. Breathe. Come back up. Excellent, we're gonna go with that same exact one one more time. Hinge back, get a hang in those hands. Breathe. Back up, nice and easy, excellent. We're gonna place one stick down here. Now this is where we're getting into the sneak and reach. And so remember with this one, this is very, very intense. So it should not be an eight or nine out of 10. It should be more like a four or a five. So you can adjust your position however you need to to make sure that you're not getting that high because I don't want you to feel like your tissues are gonna effectively rip. You wanna feel like it's a good stretch. So I'm gonna have my right knee down. I'm gonna have my left leg forward. Notice that my foot is going to start off angled out. Just make sure that we're not getting too deep into that stretch initially. With my right hand, sorry, the stick is actually on my mid thigh here. Right hand comes up over the top, thumb facing down towards the floor. I'm gonna take my left arm and I'm going to snake it through and get the stick under my left shoulder blade. Now from this position, I'm going to walk my right hand up and I'm going to wrap my thumb around. Now for a lot of people, this might be a stretch and I would advise you to hold just here. If you want a little bit more of a stretch, you say you're not getting that much of a stretch, you can actually take the bottom of the stick, move it towards your center line and wiggle that left foot in. And I'm just gonna hold here. And so what, what you're gonna notice here is I'm going to rotate my torso forward. That's gonna get a nice good stretch in the pec. You're gonna feel it in the rib cage, kind of start to open up a bit. Now to come off that stretch a bit, rotate towards that back arm. So I'm rotating to my right, and now I'm gonna rotate forward again.
Excellent. I'm gonna wiggle my left foot out, bring the bottom of the stick out. I'm gonna slowly walk my right hand back down. And then I'm gonna come out, nice and easy. I'm gonna switch sides here. Now, if you're really, really tight in the chest, you got a protracted shoulders. This is a really, really good way to kind of open up those tissues that are actually pulling you forward. But again, you want to be really, really careful with this because the stretch is very, very intense. So move at your own pace. That's a great thing about this is that you can move at a pace and level it however you need. If you're ultra flexible, you can also still, again, push into that position. I'm going to have my left hand up top, thumb facing down, right leg is angled out. I'm going to snake the right shoulder through, get it under my scap, and I'm gonna walk that left hand up. Also, this is a really, really good way to see what side is tighter, right? The side is tighter, that's the side you wanna spend a little bit more time on. I'm gonna move the bottom of the stick towards my center line, adjust my right foot. I'm gonna rotate my torso forward. Take my torso to the left, ease off that stretch a bit. Then I'm gonna rotate back forward. Wiggle my right foot out, bring the bottom of the stick out. Slowly walk that left hand back down. Excellent, and come out of it. Wonderful. Now we're gonna to go to a standing position. And again, this is where we're gonna work on shoulder extension and shoulder flexion. And so for the shoulder extension, I actually want your hands or shoulders to be internally rotated. So we're gonna go with the, think of a double overhand grip, but the six gonna be behind us here. Now I'm going to take the stick, place it behind my back, and I have my palms facing away from my posterior side of my body, or my tops of my hands are going forward. Now we're in an internally rotated position here. We're going to go for some good lat activation. So pulling apart, pulling the stick back, make sure the lats are engaging. What we don't want is this movement, All right? So if you're finding that you're moving too far, shifting your shoulder, your shoulder's moving anteriorly too much, reduce the range of motion, really try to focus on keeping those shoulders down. And so I'm gonna grip, double overhand, and I'm going to keep my glutes tight just to make sure I'm not extending forward like so. Just keep my glutes nice and tight, hips, feet are at roughly hip width. I'm gonna pull apart about roughly 30%. So you should also feel like you're pretty tall here, right? Now, I'm gonna drive the stick down towards the floor so my elbows are locked out, and then I'm going to bring the stick back away from my hips. I'm gonna hold this in position. Three, two, one, excellent. Ease off, good. And you can always move your hands out to be wider if, you're, if it's not comfortable. So squeeze those glutes, pull the stick apart, drive the stick down towards the floor so that sets your shoulders down towards your hips. And then pull the stick away, 30%. Three, two, one, back in. Ease off. Excellent. We're going to go one more time here, folks. Doing good. Doing good. Arms straight. Pull the stick apart. Squeeze those glutes. Drive the stick down towards the floor. Pull back. Breathe. Three, two, one. Back in. Excellent. Ease off. Wonderful. So oftentimes for a lot of people, shoulder extension is missing. 
So if you're doing dips and you're getting a little bit of shoulder pain, shoulder extension is a great thing to work on in order to improve your dip capability if you're doing on a dip bar in particular. Now we're gonna go with shoulder flexion. So for the shoulder flexion, we're still gonna go with that double overhand grip. However, our, grips, our grip width is gonna be wider. And what we're gonna focus on here is for one, how the shoulder blades move, allowing the shoulder blades to downwardly rotate or upwardly rotate, coming out. So almost like a scooping motion. And then we're gonna focus on pulling apart, getting the upper back nice and active, feeling those lower traps actually kick in a bit here, right? That's what's gonna stabilize from one, the spine, but two, also how well the shoulders move. So we're gonna focus on that. Now, I'm gonna take a step back and we're just gonna uh, do it from a standard position. If you wanted to make it harder, or actually if you wanna take out any chance of compensation, you would do this from a tall kneeling position. So I'm gonna go out with a wide grip here, Feet are together, or sorry, not together. Feet are at roughly about hip to shoulder width apart. Squeeze those glutes, arms are straight. Now from this position here, I'm going to pull the stick apart. And I'm also gonna try to think about bending the stick in half. So when I do that, I'm gonna get external rotation on my elbows. You see my elbows are actually rotating towards my rib cage. So I'm getting external rotation here. So I'm gonna pull, make sure you're pulling apart about 30%. And I'm going to slowly bring the stick up. Get up as high as you can, pulling apart. Excellent, back down. And compress. And ease off. You're going to notice it's going to be really, really challenging. You need to keep your core engaged, ribs down. And turn to the side, pull apart, squeeze those glutes, ribs down, and I'm going to try to think about lightly bending that stick in half, like I'm trying to break it in half. Not much, just a little bit. Then come up overhead, nice and slow. Pull. Back down. And compress. Ease off. Excellent. Let's go one more time here. Squeeze those glutes, arms straight, pull apart. Try to break that stick in half. The tension should be light about 20%. Bring the stick up. Ribs down. Stick comes back down and compress and ease off. Excellent, good. So that's another really good way, so if you're doing overhead presses or if you're doing bench press, it's a really good way to warm up the shoulders, the scapula, get it to learn how to move as we're going through space. But just wanted to kind of take today's class to kind of go through some really, really simple movements, add in the band, add some distractions, just so we can get a little bit more effectiveness out of it and kind of allow our body to get be aware of how it actually feels to actually create a little bit more joint space because we're always compressing that joint. So this is a really good way to kind of open that up. However, hope everybody had a next class and I will be sure to catch you all next time. As usual, stay safe. Have a good one.